Thank you, Jesus. Heaven's getting ready for a new day all celebration.
King Hezekiah right here. And we're going somewhere this morning. It's just going to take a minute to lay that groundwork. He in the first year, somebody said the first year of his reign, in the first month, King Hezekiah opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And he didn't stop there. He repaired them. How many this morning are thankful for open doors in our house of God? I said how many of you are thankful that the house of God stop us this morning. Yeah. Not having the freedom to gather in assembly and worship the one true living God. It didn't stop us this morning. We are free. We are free and the doors are open. But he didn't stop there. He also repaired them. And he brought in the priests. You see the priests were not even in the sanctuary because the doors had been barred up. The priests were brought in and the Levites and gathered them together. Unity. That's what it points out in my mind. Unity. We could use some more of that this morning. Into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now. Sanctify now. Don't wait until you get ready to sanctify. There is a call, there is a mandate this morning to sanctify now yourselves. And don't stop there, but sanctify the house of the Lord God of 
of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. We got to get the filth out of here. We got to purge this place of the filth. And where does it start? Right here. Somebody say it starts right here. Come on, we're away and alive this morning. We want more of God. We got we to gotta do more. I got to get rid of the filth in my life just like you do. Amen. And you see, there was nothing going on at the altars. The lamps were out. There was no sacrifice going on at the altar. The doors of the, the house of the Lord had been barred up, had been shut off by the king. But you know what? King Hezekiah said, we got to fix that. 29 and verse 35. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance. This is after he's getting everything back into order. Amen. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance. Not just in a little bit. But they were in abundance. With the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings. For every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order or it was restored. And you know what King Hezekiah could be found doing in verse 36? And Hezekiah rejoiced. And all the people. Somebody say all the people. Hezekiah rejoiced. Do you know what it did not look like? When Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced, you know what it didn't look like? You know what it didn't sound like? What about that Super Bowl the other night? How noisy was it? Right? How big did they cheer for that? How big did they applaud? How big did they jump up and down for a ball that ain't never done nothing for? Come on now. You're going to worship something. I wouldn't have you worshiping some ball. And I wouldn't, worship, I wouldn't have you worshiping some uh, player either. So when we come into the house of God, when everything is set in order, there is a rejoicing. There's a lifting of the hands. There's a lifting of the heart. You began to leap for joy. You began to shout unto the living God when things are set in order. And all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. You need God to do something suddenly in your life. Get your life in order. Get the filthiness out of the sanctuary. I find it very interesting that the, the one thing that he also did was the celebration and the observation of the Passover. The God mandated festivals. One of them. Is renewed, restored, and it is set back in order. And that's something that's not really touched on. Is those God meant those seven God mandated festivals? We don't mind celebrating anything else: birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, anything else. But what about that God mandated festival? And it got quiet. But you see, in order to get back into order and to restore order into the house of God we've got to go by the word and the word says forevermore celebrate these God mandated festivals yeah. not man made right. these are God festivals Bless him, Jesus. and the Passover was set back in order Verse, the tail end of verse 25 says Judah rejoiced so there was great joy in Jerusalem. You see, when praise is rejoicing, I said when praise is rejoicing, there will be great joy in the foundation of peace. Again, you need peace in your life? Begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. <clears throat> For since the time of Solomon, the son of King David of Israel, there was not the light in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and they blessed the people and their voice was heard and their prayer, you know what happened to their prayer? <laughs> their prayer came up to His holy dwelling place uh, even unto heaven. You want your prayer going up to that throne? Amen. We've got to do more around here. I said we have got to do more around here. 
That's in Jesus. Hezekiah didn't stop there in the word. The altars to the false gods and to the images of idolatry, they were torn down. And Brother Joseph, they were not just torn down. They were broken into pieces. Utterly destroyed. Utterly destroyed. They were broken into pieces. Chapter 31 and verse 5, the word says that he encouraged the people. I'm encouraging you this morning, Black Zion Pentecostal Church. Yes. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance. Uh-oh. They brought in abundance. The first fruits of corn, wine, and oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. After everything was set in order, after the filthiness was purged out, then they began to bring their tithe and their offering, not to what they felt like, but in abundance. That tells me they gave 10% and more. If that's in abundance. Verse 20. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every word that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the, his, in, in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. Right. He sold out to God with his whole heart. Yes. You better listen this morning. Yes. This is a God mandated message. Yes. And it, and he did it with all his heart. And you know what the word says? He prospered. Right. Right. I said he prospered. Anybody want to prosper this morning? Yes. Seek after God with your whole heart. Amen. Above all things, seek him first. Yes, it is. That's right. And I love it in Kings, and I didn't give Sister Cousin Shauna this, but in 2 Kings, and you don't have to turn there, I'm just going to read it. Hezekiah trusted in, he leaned on, and he was confident in the Lord, the God of Israel, so that neither after him or before him was any of his, was any one of all the kings of Judah like him. For he clung and he held fast to the Lord. And he ceased not to follow him. Amen. But he kept his commandments. And as the Lord commanded Moses. He followed him with his whole heart. His whole heart. Is that you this morning? Chapter 32. And verse 1 of 2 Chronicles. And after all of this stuff was set in order. You would think that the story would read. How everything just was, was perfect. How everything, yes. How it was not all well, but it was all well. You would think that it would have been clouds that they began to float on. Because you see Hezekiah, he restored, he opened the house of God. He repaired it. He got the filth out of it. There was a fire built on that altar. I said there was a fire built on that altar. Thanks. You would think that we would read that everything was perfect from then on. But I read that after these things, the acts and deeds of faithfulness and the establishment of them, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, the enemy, he came and he entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities. You see, my, my word reads that that he came, the enemy came, and he encamped against Hezekiah's praise. Nobody knows what it feels like when the enemy encamps around your praise this morning, do you, Black Zion Pentecostal Church? Or am I the only one that the enemy encamps around my praise? I'm not alone this morning, God. You heard him. And he encamped against the fence cities. And you see the word says that the enemy, he thought to win them for himself. But enemy, you don't know what I know. <laughs> I said enemy, you don't know what I know this morning. Or you would have never encamped around my praise this morning. You don't know what I know. And when Hezekiah saw it, 
that Sennacherib was come and that he had purpose to fight against Jerusalem. Uh oh, not only is he against and camped against my praise, he's against and trying to fight against my foundation of peace. And I know we all know what that feels like when the enemy is fighting against your foundation of peace. Can I tell you that the enemy is fighting against your foundation of peace this morning? Yes, he will. But enemy, you don't know what I know. Is he it? Or you kept your tail back at your own country. You'd have stayed in hell where you belong, enemy. That's right. Come on. Yes, I can. He took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. Right. You see, that man of God, he didn't work alone. Uh -huh. no. Don't dare let that man of God work alone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pray and fast for the men of God in this church. And you see, there was something about that um, that ancient warfare that it was it was known as a siege. A siege is a military blockade of a city or a fortress with the intent of conquering by attrition. And I don't know about y'all, but I had to look that word up. <coughs> I know some words, but attrition was not one of them, such a family. Attrition meaning the, the action or the process of gradually reducing the strength or the effectiveness of someone or something through sustained attacks or pressure. Yeah. Wearing them away, wearing them down by friction. We can grind to the nerve, keep it on day after day. Don't nobody know what that feels like in the house this morning, do you? Yes, indeed. That siege attack. against a siege warfare attack. One of the main things is preparing a sufficient supply of food and water. And I'm sorry but not sorry. But as I began to study this message and as I began to listen to the leading of the Holy Ghost and fire <laughs> it went straight right back to the Holy Ghost. I said it went right back to the Holy Ghost. And I'm not ashamed this morning. Thank you, Jesus. This morning I ask you, how's your water supply? Can I tell you that water is a necessity in life? Water is one of the basic needs in life. I ask you this morning, what well are you drinking from? I said, what well are you drinking from this morning? Thank you, Jesus. John 4 and 14 says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I, Jesus, shall give him, they shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Everlasting life, Bishop. Everlasting life, Bishop. You see, the woman at the well, she learned. Come on, say it she learned that you got to drink the water. She learned that you got to get the water on the inside of you. Can I tell you there's a difference in feeling the flow of the water move on you and actually drink it from the water? Amen. Come on. Mm. There's many times that I feel the water flowing on me right now. I said I feel that water flowing on me right now. But there's a difference in feeling it and drinking. Come on. Physical hydration is very important. Years ago in a different season of my life, thankfully, I, I was running a marathon and it was very cold weather. It was in December. And we were on the coast, but you think, well, we're on the coast, so it's not going to be cold. We woke up, and it was 27 degrees. I had just gotten over a cold and was still taking some antibiotics. Little did I know that helps to dehydrate you. Well, when it's freezing cold, I don't know if you know this or not, but when it's freezing cold, 
you don't really want to drink water Amen. or Powerade or Gatorade or whatever else that they're trying to give you. You don't want to drink. I didn't start drinking until about mile eight. By that time, it was too late. Can I tell you that by that time, it was too late. My body began to dehydrate. Dehydration in a natural sense brings on mental issues. Mental cognition. You began to hallucinate. You don't function properly. Let me just tell you, you don't look like you're functioning properly. You can tell it. And my God, you can feel it. But I kept on going. Because why? Because I began to drink water. I realized, hello, hello, you're thirsty. Just because you don't feel like you need to drink, you better drink if you don't make it to that finish line. I didn't sign up and I didn't pay all that money to quit or give up on my leg, Sister Stacy. I paid that big money like a moron to run that 26.2 miles. A marathon is not a 3.2, just so we know. Can I tell you this morning that I didn't sign up to quit halfway? My grandparents, my great grandparents, my parents, they didn't stick with this thing for me to just stop at my leg and give up. Because I'm drinking from the well that springs up into everlasting life. Jesus went on to say, but the hour cometh. And now it is. Can I tell you now is the hour? Can I tell you now is the hour, like God? When the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the one for the Father seeketh such to worship him. For God is a spirit. How can you worship the Father in spirit if you ain't got the spirit? And they that worship him must worship him in what? They've got to worship him in the spirit and in the truth. Can I tell you, worshipers, true worshipers, they drink from the well of water springing up. And my title this morning, that's why we've got to prepare the channel. We've got to prepare the channel. I wish Brother Baldwin was here to, to hear this this morning. He impacted me more than he knows when he said that the other Sunday morning in Sunday school. We just got to get in the proper channel. Right. Right. Can I tell you this morning that we've got to prepare the channel right. and I ain't talking about the TV. Right. we got to prepare that channel this morning. Yeah. I asked you this morning, what are you doing to prepare the channel? Right. Come on. Well, and you've got some that would say, not in here, of course, I hope. <laughs> I'm just going to sit right here, and I'm just going to trust in the Lord. Lord. Oh, hands up, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to sit right here, and in my mind, I'm just going to sit here and trust in the Lord. Can I tell you that the spring is already bubbling right. into everlasting life? God's going to do His part. Will we do ours? Come on. We expect God to roll out the red carpet and we won't even pave the way for Him in our lives. Come on. Can I tell you that there's some that says, well, the Word says to stand still and know. So I'm just going to stand here. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here and know that the Lord, He is God, and He is good, and yes, He is. But can I tell you that the word that I read says, faith without works, it is dead. I serve a living God, so I've got to be alive in Him. And how do I show that I'm alive in Him? Oh, my hand is up. In wrestling, when they're trying to pin them, trying to win the match. You better watch out when they're laying still and they're fixing the win and all of a sudden one of them raises that arm up, Sister Stacy, or that leg comes up. <laughs> you know what they're telling? Hey, you didn't win. I'm still in the fight. <laughs> when we raise our hands in this place and we raise a hallelujah with our mouth, we're telling the enemy, hey, I'm still in the fight this morning. You can't have my way. I'm preparing a channel this morning. Somebody said, 
say prepare the channel. So there was gathered much people together. A unified purpose, Brother Ricky. Unified. Much people. Not just the shouters. Not just the praisers. Not just the ones that everybody automatically thinks that you've got it all together because you're standing behind that pulpit. Uh-oh. Not just them, but it says much people gathered together who stopped all the fountains and the brooks that ran through the midst of the land saying, why should the enemy, why should the kings of Assyria come and find this water? Also, he strengthened himself and he built up the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without. And he prepared Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. Can I tell you this morning that a defense wall and an abundance of shields and abundance of weaponry is great? But what about the well this morning? What about that spring of living water? We've got to do our part to protect it and defend it at all costs. We've got to prepare the channel this morning. The most simplest method of siege warfare, physically talking, is starvation. You see, that enemy would encamp around the ones that they were trying to conquer to keep them inside. To keep them inside, to keep them from coming out and eating or gathering up that water. Because the water was on the outside. The water was on the outside. It wasn't on the inside. And on occasion, and I found, found, found this crazy. On occasion, they would send out, in air quotes, surplus civilians from inside that city wall. And I thought it was going to read that they would fight, Brother David. No. Their strategy against the enemy was to drive out, to send them out, the surplus civilians, to reduce the demands of stored food and water. They said, here, you've got to go. The enemy is out there. We've got too many mouths to feed. Our supply of water, our supply of food, it's growing slim to none. You've got to go. Can I tell you this morning, we don't have time to send not one soul from this sanctuary. We don't have time in the hour that we're in. The coming of the Lord is right around the corner. No matter if the enemy is right there or not. And some might say, listening to this message this morning, well, Hezekiah defended the well physically. And that is so. But can I tell you that before Hezekiah defended it physically, he tapped into that spring spiritually. All right. yeah. Before attempting to physically defend that water supply, yeah. he had renewed, revived, and restored, and he had set in place a revival. He had set in order Judah. He had set back in order the praise. There was rejoicing in the land. There was joy going on in the land. And you see that physical well, and it was mind blowing again. That physical spring, that water supply that Hezekiah decided to defend by constructing a channel underground, in some places 130 feet underground, it had a name. The spring on the outside of the city, it had a name. And it was called the Gihon. <laughs> and the name reflects this spring. And can I tell you the Hebraic meanings for the Gihon, the spring that he decided that he was going to defend and protect? That he decided he was going to take it from the outside of the city walls to the inside? Gihon means a gusher, a bubbler, a great breaking forth, or a bursting forth. The name reflects the flow of the spring. The Gihon spring of the foundation of peace was the main water source located outside the city walls. Hezekiah said, I've got to get that bubbler. 
I've got to tap into that spring that's, that's coming up. I've got to tap into that and I've got to take it from the outside. I've got to get it on the inside of me. Can I tell you this morning, Holy Ghost? Come on, say it. Holy Ghost, wake up this morning. Can I tell you you got to get it from the outside city walls to the inside of you? <laughs> Hezekiah physically defended and protected it by channeling that spring to the inside of the city's fortified wall. <laughs> Hezekiah knew that if there was going to be any comfort found, if there was going to be any saving grace found, then he had to get that well of spring, springing up, gushing up water to the inside. Right, right. Do you realize that today? Come on. I said, do you really realize that today? Does it strike home? Or is your mind bogged down? Are you spiritually dehydrated this morning? Can I tell you that we've got a well that springs up this morning into everlasting life? Come and drink up the water. Now is the time. Now is the time for you to do so. You see, when the enemy surrounds you, you had better hope and pray that you have a channel prepared from the outside of you to the inside of you. It's so anyhow. You better have that channel going from the outside to the inside. Can I tell you there's been things in my life that I never would have made it. I never would have made it without the Holy Ghost bringing up inside of me. Even in 2023 it is so. And you see, King Hezekiah, he didn't work alone by defending that water supply. No. He had workers that started in point A outside the city wall. And he had a team of workers that began on the inside in a pool. So yeah. long. Yeah. Come on. So you've got teams, two teams up here and right here. Now, in this day and time, with all the engineering that we have, that would not be... I mean, that would not be anything for them to meet in the middle. Uh -huh. But these two teams, Sister Momar, I know this reflects a memory in your mind right now. These two teams, they spent timeless hours underground with limited to sometimes no water, no food supply, light, family time, and no Facebook. No news. You know why? Because they were preparing the channel. They were preparing the channel to get it from the outside to the inside. Yes. You see, while others were above them, they still carried out their lives. While the workers were still chiseling. Yes. While the workers were still chiseling. Yes. While the workers were still digging. While they were still continuing to prepare yes. the channel. Right. Right. Can I tell you that the need to defend... And prepare the channel. It justified their work. Right. It right. justified right. every ounce right. of time spent. Amen. It justified Amen. spending that time with another stinky worker. Mm. You know they stunk. Mm -hmm. It justified every, every moment that they spent away from their family, away from their loved ones. Right. And you can't tell me that at points in that, in that process that they couldn't hear the hustle and bustle of everybody just living their life. <laughs> but they didn't stop. They didn't say, well, God, they're, they're doing what they want to do. They're doing what they're doing. They're getting to spend time with their loved ones. They're getting to go out to eat. They're getting to be on their cell phone. They didn't say that. This is just 2023 version. <laughs> They're getting to do what they want. But here I am, stuck in here with another worker, chiseling away underground. Can't nobody see what I'm doing. Can I tell you that God sees what you're doing this morning and He will elevate you? I 
just imagine that one of them began to tell the other as the as the heart panteth after the water brooks so panteth my soul after thee O God for my soul thirsteth for God the living God my mind is made up can I tell you this morning that my mind is made up just like those chosen diggers just like those anointed diggers in that tunnel my family and my church Do you? Do you? Will you admit just how desperate you are? Or will you still just sit there and act like you just got it all together? The choice is yours. Can I tell you, I don't have it all together. I've got to keep on channeling this morning. And you better do the same. And if I see someone... That needs just a little bit of assistance. Come on, we gotta prepare that channel. Come on, we gotta dig this channel out. We gotta dig that channel out. The word says the priest, the ministry is supposed to be crying out in an accessory from the porch to the altar. From the porch to the altar, interceding for God's children. When's the last time that you interceded walked in that area right there? Can I tell you that there's many times when I walk this area right here and I prepare a channel because I'm preparing to see backsliders drink from that water. My mind is made up no matter what the enemy looks like on the outside of the wall. And that's what it takes this morning is a made up mind. 32 and the tail end of 6 and Hezekiah he spake comfortably comfortably to them say and I'm going to speak comfortably to you this morning because I love each and every one of you and we're all in this together and I want us to continue to prepare that channel for my loved ones for your loved ones for every backslider for every prodigal that is about to walk inside these doors Can I tell you this morning that we 
are dependent on that defense this morning. Uh -huh. And notice that that defense was not open combat. Because God said, it's my battle. It's battle. Today, it's God's battle. We're going to do what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to get 130 feet up under the ground if we have to. Yeah. We're going to get low. That sounds like on your knees right there. And we're going to prepare the channel. Because we know that that spring is still alive today. Yes, it is. And just like the Gihon spring, the spring that Jesus was talking about, it's bubbling this morning. It's gushing up this morning. And I'm going to fill the channel. Glory. You see, when the enemy lays siege, and notice I said when, not if, but when. When that enemy lays siege to your praise and tries to conquer your foundation of peace. <laughs> trying to spiritually deprive you of that water that springs up into everlasting life. I hope you have begun to channel By preparing the channel, <laughs> by getting the water that flows, that springs up when you need it, when you need to take a drink of that water that will cause you to never thirst again, your defense is to prepare the channel. Get it from the outside to the inside, no matter what the enemy is telling you this morning. which I one day hope to, you can still see the marks of the pickaxes on the sides from where those two teams come, come through that bedrock. You can still see the markings on the wall from those pickaxes. Can I tell you that I can still see the markings down this center aisle of the pickaxes of the workers? thing that you can see and I love this because how many of us have ever made mistakes we don't have enough hands feet fingers or toes to raise because also you can see every miswhack from the workers you can see every time that that they were trying to to channel that water to prepare the channel where they got off course slightly and made an error that what a miracle that was but you know what what led them brother Marcus a trickle of water both groups followed just a slight flow of that gushing spring Gihon just a little bit of trickle sometimes we see just a small thing answered and we begin to just sit there on God because it's not a big thing for everyone to see 
Can I tell you, if you've got that small trickle, you keep preparing the channel. You keep on. like we're all accustomed to, right? So I'm going to attempt to read it and just let you mind. Try to get it. When the axes met each other, they began to, to chisel a message on the side of that tunnel. This is history. This ain't just in the Bible. Look it up for yourself. The tunneling. And this is the story of the tunneling. While the picks at pickaxes, each crew tore the other. And while they were still three cubits to cut, the voice of a man was heard calling to his counterpart. For there was a break. There was a break in the tunnel. Yeah. In the rock. On the right. And on the day of the breaking, through the miners hewed, each man towards his fellow pick Axe against pick axe. I'm trying to read it. This ain't me and this ain't in the Bible. This is in this is in that tunnel, y'all. <laughs> and the water flows from the spring to the reservoir. And the high Yeah, it's 